that is quite a large area to be working. Um, I'll probably keep areas you know, a bit smaller than that. Yeah. Um, obviously, the smaller the area that you're working on, the more you can just focus on that one. Just a, a small, manageable mm. section at a time. Maybe you need to tape and off areas you know you've done? Um, no, not tape areas off. Just um, take them off in the brain. Mm. Like, have a plan. I always, you know, I'll do this, that, 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 probably that and that together. Well, mm. two separate ones. Um, I don't know, I guess you just get in a routine of doing things once once you've done once you've done a few you get in a routine. Yeah, normally I would just do it like half, 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 half. Right. Oh, I mean if you're just doing a single then yeah, you yeah. can work you can work more yeah. area with a single, but when you're cutting Yeah, you wanna you just wanna work one man, manageable area. Um, I don't know, I'll probably just say, um, leave the IP for now, I'll just probably need to do this top half, I think. You haven't done up there, have you? No. no. I need to do like, from here down to the now. Right, well, it looks like I need to do there. There, so that's one bit. And then, yeah, yeah, just. Push the pad. Just so that you can, you know, just like glide it across the paintwork yeah. instead of. You know, Right. 
for you to come and take me to the racetrack. I, I, I do want to, um, I want to spring action day in March. Oh, where's that going on? Uh, Castle Cool. Oh, okay. Is that up north? No, I can't remember. I went there last year. Oh. And, um, I just don't you know, to escape some of my crash into me, like. Yeah. Not luck. You wouldn't, um, oh, you'd have, you'd have to go and get. Into the room. Yeah. Day I just felt like nearly 300 quid for me. It's not really worth it. For a day? Yeah. By the time I pay fuel, I'll pay the war on track and everything. It's working for 400 quid. So I know it doesn't matter. I'm planning, provided it all goes well with the RS, I'm doing a European road trip. Yeah. Maybe like June, well, April, May or June. Doing a track day at Spa. Um, they charge you around 90, 90, equivalent to 90 quid or is it 90 euros? I think it's 90 euros per 25 minutes on track. So two 25 minute sessions. Yeah. Then go to Switzerland, the Swiss Alps. Near, near, near Berlin. Oh, I went there a few years ago. Oh, I'm not going to Germany this time. But if you crash in the river and you charge you like two grand call up feet, don't it? Yeah, you've got the the recovery truck to come out and get you, which is probably three or four hundred. Yeah, oh yeah. If you, if you close the track, you charge you like a few thousand, don't it? Oh, for every like ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some adapt. They also charge you for the cost of repairs to the armco, track closure. Obviously recovery, mm -hmm. then you've got the expense of recovering your car home and then fixing the damage. So yeah, it could, Jesus, you're looking at thousands yeah. if you fuck up at the Nürburgring. <laughs> Jeez. I've, I went in the caddy a few years ago. I think I did four laps. Well, you went around in the caddy? Yeah, I did four laps in the caddy. Got it remapped, so it's 140 or there, about maybe 135, 140 horsepower. But it's still a van at the end of the day. I didn't overtake a single vehicle, not one car. I almost overtook a BMW 3 Series, I think. Yeah. Until he decided to speed up. I wasn't far off a Porsche. And then he sped up. <laughs> so I overtook nothing. I went out in a truck prepared M3, which was cool. A Skyline R33, 400 odd horsepower. A Caterham, I think it was a Caterham 7 of some kind, or a yeah, Caterham 1. Yeah, I think it was Caterham. Not that one. That was cool. Drove the Porsche Cayenne, curved mm. the wheel on a Porsche Cayenne. No way. Cayenne, a Cayman, Porsche Cayman. Oh. Um, on a curve. We were at the um, we were at the hotel or the B and B or whatever it was, and I think someone that one of the guys knew came up and he says, asked if I wanted to take his Cayman for a drive, so I did, and then up curving the wheel. <laughs> Recharge it. Nope. <laughs> Left on drive, piece of shit in the dark. Okay, we. Yeah. <laughs> when you when you when you went to park, is it? Did no. Um, oh, I can't remember. Was it? I can't remember. Coming up to the roundabout. Took. Uh, I can't. I just can't remember. I think I went round the roundabout and just. Being left on drive, yeah, left on drive. I didn't, I wasn't aware how close the right hand side was. You know, that was the first left on drive vehicle I've probably ever driven mm. on on the roads. Uh, I drove a, what is it called, um, transport and left hand drive. Right, really weird. Yeah, it is, isn't it? I mean, not used to it. What well, was a rent, a rental car? The Cayman was. Was a rental one. But yeah, there's a good number on the wheel. <laughs> I did a good number on the wheel.
quiz. This is all the news just this time. Yeah. Yeah, the Swiss Alps, you've got the Thurka Pass, the Suskins Pass, and the Clausen Pass. They're like mountainous roads. Uh. Um, the Thurka Pass is rated as one of the best driving roads in the world. Mm. If you Google it, um, like it's just so scenic. It's, mm. it's down, you do a twisty road down the side of a mountain. You pretty much start at the top and um, drive down it. Which is cool. Well, Every time there. you get to the bottom, you'll go up and crash. Oh, well, yeah, you need to have your wits about yourself. You need to uh, slow the fog down. Uh, be an experience, I imagine. Going over to Monza. Got Monza Autodrome racetrack, mm. world F1 thing. I could drive a Ferrari or a Lamborghini for. 170 or 170 quid, 100, yeah, 170 quid. Yeah. Don't know if I'll bother though. Probably just go there for the crack and just watch other people. We've ever had a fast car. Fastest car I've owned, Type R, EP3. <laughs> <laughs> so no. <laughs> Never owned a fast car. I think even at 300 horsepower, the RS standard is just going to be screaming out for mm. some mods. I've got my eye on a, um, an MR385, one that's had the Monsoon 385 kit. Yeah. Um, 18 and a half grand, I think 385 horsepower then. Mm. I'd have to be. go for a standard and just do it on myself. What's that? I'd have to go for a standard and do it on myself. Yeah. You never know how they looked after it. Like. Well, this one, um, I don't know, if it's got full service history, this one's owned. The one I'm watching has been owned by like, oh, it's only been owned by like two people. Mm -hmm. uh, the chap before had it serviced at the Ford main dealer, and the chap currently um, works for Ford, so it's all, yeah, this one looks legit, isn't it? Yeah. There's another one on there, on the other hand, it's got bloody. 1990s max power boy racer stickers down the side. <laughs> it's been forged, the paint's peeling off. Um, yeah, absolute heat, and it's running 400 horsepower. Mm -hmm. Fully forged engine, it's good for, I don't know, good for city horsepower. But he's not, it's only running 400. So, yeah. Normally, when they car that a lot of spent on them, they look, the filmers look after them. Yeah. That's your friend, didn't it? So these cars are driven, they're, they're built to be driven hard. Yeah. They are built to be raced. As long as they are looked after them. Um, yeah, that should be good. Should be sweet. It's either gets a completely standard one that's been looked after, or something like a Montu mm -hmm. 385 one. There's only one of those on at the moment. It's been on for a couple of months. Who is Frank McCorton? Do you do the windows and stuff? Yeah, um, G1, G Technic G1 Clear Vision Smart Glass is um, Strang McCorton for the windows made by G Technic. What about exhaust? Yeah, exhaust as well. Um, depends how much time I've got free, I'll always do. I'll always do. I'll always put Crystal Sim Light on there. And the exhaust? 
On the exhaust tips, yeah. And they get polished beforehand as well. Yeah. When you polish your exhaust tips, what do you use? Like? Uh, metal polish, I use... Uh, auto um, huh? Auto salt. Yeah, you can use auto salt, yeah. I use Meguiar's, um, a microfiber pad to begin with. If that's not cutting it, then uh, wire wool. Some fine grade wire wool and some metal polish works wonders. So you use a machine polish on no. the exhaust? No. Uh, wire wool. I'll have a look at your exhaust and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, explain how I treat yours. But wire wool is really good. You just sometimes really need to spend like 20 minutes on each exhaust. To yeah. And we've got four. We've got four. Oh no, we've got two on it. Is it two or four? Oh, yours are black. Yeah. Yeah, still the same. I'd, um, same as polishing paintwork, start off soft, and if they ain't cutting it, mm -hmm. then um, just go a bit harder. So either a little microfiber applicator and then yeah. the metal polish, and if not, why wool in the metal polish? Um, your gloss black trim, I'd treat one of those cutting pads and fine polish. If that isn't doing it, step it up to the green. Not just seems pink though. Yeah, these exactly same as paint, just to bear in mind that they are softer. Mm. Um, they are a lot softer, in fact, and thinner pink as well. Um, but a little microfiber cutting pad and some finishing polish should work wonders, should polish up pretty easily. Uh, the bonnet's looking pretty sweet. The only thing is, is that now this needs to really stay dry for 12 no, hours. But it's not going to. No. Uh, but if it doesn't rain by the time we get on the no, The roads are going to be wet though, that's yeah. no problem. But there is a Well, I think you didn't see, but. Um, uh, I think potentially, obviously, if you get water droplets that like sit and they settle. Mm. Ah, I don't know. The longer it stays indoors, the better. Yeah, it just stays in that room, doesn't it? Oh, does it? Yeah. The problem is I just need to drive it home. Yeah. Um, I don't know because I've never, I don't, I've never, I haven't experienced that. Cars always stay there. It doesn't help, but I was going to try my culture all in the uh, Fanny Lab. What's the Fanny Lab like? How long does that have to stay indoors? Um, I'm not really sure. But people have said, but well, people like, look in detail and page, right? And people say you should keep them in those tiny holes after the court then. But they didn't say it was too court then. Oh. Well, I just noticed uh, some residue up here. But yeah, just take your time to check the results. I will always um, go around with the light afterwards because yeah. it sets. So it sets. Generally speaking. What time are we on? Eight six. That's a good uh, strong coating residue spotting. Mm. That needs a bit of finish in there though. <laughs> there. Oh, yeah. right. It's your own vehicle at the end of the day, so it's not worth. You want to see what we do that to the paint, does Thanks. 
some final photos. That's on the